So we see that uh, when we're talking about Kirchhoff's laws, and it's pronounced Kirchhoff, people say Kirchhoff, that's fine. Uh, people un anglicize all kinds of things. Uh, but Kirchhoff's laws have to do with these two types of circuit junctions. And the two types of circuit junctions, again, are? Series and parallel. Series and parallel, okay. So for series junctions and parallel junctions. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tackle series first, and then I wanna tackle parallel. So what I wanna tackle first is loads. In this case, I'm gonna draw them as electronic resistors, electrical resistors in series. Okay, and we know that if it was a light bulb, it would be a loop with a circle around it. But for just some simple ohmic resistors, we're gonna do these zigzags. And how do I know just by inspection, visual inspection, that this is a series junction rather than a parallel junction? Yeah? Only one path in the electron. Yeah, one pathway. Pathway actually is a really <coughs> is a really good word to use. Path, there's one pathway that electrons can follow. Now again, we're not going to talk about electron travel, we're going to talk about conventional current travel, but you know, in terms of pathways, it's the same idea in principle. It's just that whole historical hang up about what charges are actually in motion. So we're going to do conventional current flow. We're going to talk about uh, this current is exiting from the positive terminal of uh, a power source. But if we were going to measure the voltage or the electric potential difference across each of these resistors we might use a voltmeter or a multimeter set to the voltage setting and we could find the electric potential difference or the voltage synonymous terms across each of these resistors okay by connecting a voltmeter in parallel. We could also find the voltage across the whole cluster of resistors, like from one end to the other. And if you like, we could call that the total voltage for the whole junction, this whole, and you know, every time I, I'm going to use the word junction, but I want to make sure that you understand what I mean by the word junction. A junction is a cluster of resistors either oriented in series or in parallel to, to one another, okay? So these guys are connected in series to one another and they're a cluster of them, so I'm gonna call them a series junction. Is that okay for vocab? It's, I'm just introducing it one little bit at a time. So I've got a junction of series resistors here, and so I could talk about these guys as resistor one, resistor two, resistor three, and if there's resistor one, resistor, resistor one, resistor two, and resistor three, and I measure the voltage, I might find that the voltage for resistor one was measured to be V1. And for resistor 2, I might find the voltage to be V2. And for resistor 3, I might find the voltage or the electric potential difference to be V3 across that one. You know, connecting the actual multimeter as you did when you were in grade 9. Okay, and we'll get a chance to maybe play with these things a little bit hands-on. But I want to talk about the background theory first before we get a, hand, a chance to do that sort of thing. Now, if I found the voltage across each one of them individually, it makes sense that I could connect a multimeter across all three of them at once. Right, one probe at one end and the other probe at the other end and find the total voltage and we could call it total voltage. Now more commonly in British circles they might call it V0 because if you have V1, V2 and V3 you might say V0 is you know the master voltage, the total voltage. We're going to call it total voltage though for our notation. It's very common to say V0 though. So if you see it don't get too upset about it. It's not like there's zero voltage there, it means the total voltage for that junction. Okay. So we've got our total voltage. And there's something that we talked about uh, in the past. We talked about the idea of, say, waterfalls or gravitational potential energy, something of that sort as being sort of an, an analogy. We said that if you have a graph of voltage, we could say voltage versus time. Time's as good a, an axis as any. What we could say is that the, the power source, in this case maybe a battery, raises up the voltage, increases the electric potential energy per charge. And then as it travels through the wire, there's very little voltage change. We're, we're going to say virtually none. What happens when it hits the first resistor? Yeah, it decreases a little bit. Then there's the wire between resistors and it doesn't change much. Then what happens when it hits the next resistor? goes down. Then it goes between the wire between them. What happens during the third resistor? 
goes down how much to where I, I should say down to zero okay back to the original okay so we're talking about increasing the energy per charge and then gradually each charge loses all of its electrical potential energy just like maybe uh, a molecule of water getting pumped to the top of a waterfall eventually loses all of its gravitational potential energy relative to the pump, uh, the height of the pump rather, when it comes all the way back down to the bottom again. Anyway, the idea here is that this jump up from the power source might be labeled as our V total. What, I, what could I label this as? V1. What could I label this second drop as? V2. What about this one? V3. Now, if only, I'm only concerned about magnitudes here, not signs or anything like that, but just sizes. What mathematical expression could I come up with here? What equals what? Yeah? You got it. If we're just concerned about magnitudes, V1 is equal to V, sorry, V total is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Anybody recognize that from grade 9? It's been a while, I know. But you should recognize something like that from grade 9. Now, I'm going to put a box around that because that's one of Kirchhoff's laws. Now, this could go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It could go on and on and on. But what would have to be true about the, the circuit if I had V4, V5, V6, V7? Yeah. Yeah, that's how many resistors I'd have to have. So I've only stopped at the third one because we're only considering a three resistor system. This is this could be generalized out to being dot 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 as many resistors as there are in the circuit in series in that junction. Okay? So that's one law. Now, having said that law, and it's one of the parallel I'm uh, sorry, the series circuit laws for Kirchhoff, I want to do a little aside and I'd like to mention that V is equal to IR. Whose law is that? Ohm's law. This guy is one I don't want to forget about. It's always in the background, and it actually is true for each of the individual resistors that V equals IR. In other words, if I know the current going through an individual resistor, and I know the voltage drop across an individual resistor, I can calculate the resistance of that resistor. That's for one resistor. So you want to resistance. resistance is ohms. But you could also talk about it in terms of the, the uh, units that make up that unit. We're going to discuss them as ohms, though. Okay. All right, so we've got volts equals current times resistance. Um, from there, I just want to make a, a quick logical deduction. If I know the current here, what could I say about the current over here on my circuit? It should be the same, because there's no branches. I, and Josh said earlier, no, uh, there's not multiple pathways. So we're not splitting up the current in a series circuit when there's only one pathway. So if I know current here and here is the same, what can you tell me at resistor 1? What's the current? Is it the same? What about at resistor 2? Same. What about here? Same. So if somebody wanted to come up with a formula, oh, by the way, resistance total, if you like. The, the, I'm sorry, the current total. That is the current coming out of the, uh, the power source, the energy source. Or, or you could even say the current entering the junction is current total. Right? Because the current goes this way, this way, and it never does split up. So the total current, the total current is equal to what? Do you remember this from grade 9? Is it a summation or is it a bunch of equal signs? A bunch of equal signs. E total is equal to I... I total, sorry, is equal to I1, which is also equal to I2, which is also equal to I3. In other words, this is a mathematical way of saying, look, all the currents are equal to each other anywhere you go within a given junction, as long as it's a series junction. Okay? Anywhere you go within a series junction, the current remains the same. Now, I'd like to make use of this statement, because this is one rule, this is another rule, and I'd like to make use of the second rule along with Ohm's law. And what I'd like to do is sub in Ohm's law. Oh, sorry, I've gone into the wrong, sorry, not the second rule. I want to make use of the first rule, my fault. I want to sub in Ohm's law. So instead of saying V total, I want to write I total times R total. And instead of saying V1, I could rewrite it if I could measure current and resistance as I1 times R1, and so on. I2 times R2, I3 times R3. Now, 
now, and this is where I, I confuse myself, I'm sorry. Now I can make use of this idea that all the currents are the same. So instead of saying I1, I2, I3, and I total, I'm just going to let, let all the I's be the same. And I'm going to rewrite it like this. I'm going to say I times R total equals I times R1 plus I times R2 plus I times R3. I could, I times RT? Sure, yeah, I could, I could stop saying the word times, yeah. Now, if I've got all these terms with a common factor, what can I do with that common factor? Factor it out. Factor it out, you got it. So I can say I times RT is equal to I times R1 plus R2 plus R3. What could I do next to make our, our lives a little easier? Divide them both by i, effectively canceling out the i's, which leaves us with a nice tidy little formula. Total resistance is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, and we could say that there's a total of three rules, laws, that Kirchhoff proposes for a series circuit junction. Okay, so these ones here are all specifically series laws. Only for series junctions. Or I could say series junction laws. But they all come out of a little bit of logic combined with, well, I mean, it's all logic, but some logical deduction along with Ohm's law gets you to the, the three laws. Now, the next three laws are similar, so I want to take a look in a second at the parallel laws.